In today's video, I'm going to talk about speeches, do's and don'ts. Rule number one, do not wing your speech, no matter how well or how confidently you think you know the person. I've seen probably about 2,000 speeches. I come from the television industry and I've worked with professionals. I can tell you this, in all the speeches that I've seen where somebody tried to wing it, I think one person managed to get it right. One person. Every other person went and, uh, well, yeah, you know, Kevin is a great guy and, um, and, uh, and yeah, um, and, and, and yeah, we've known each other for years and, um, and well, Janine is, is amazing and, uh, and uh, yeah. And that is literally what the speech turns out to be. It just becomes an embarrassment. You are better off reading the speech going, Kevin and I met when we were 15. It was amazing. And when we got together, I knew he would make an amazing guy. I know that sounds really over the top, but the idea here is that you get, you have a structure when you read a speech. That is a really, really important thing. Do not wing the speech. Do you hear me? Do not wing the speech. It's a bad idea. Using a cell phone for your notes. Oh, I don't really like that so much. I think it looks like, well, like this. And this, let's face it, is um, the I'd rather be doing something else, somewhere else, uh, symbol. Get my point? Don't do it. You're better off reading a, uh, a set of cue cards that always looks nice, looks very professional. Uh, you can also, of course, use an iPad, put it down on the lectern. And you can, you can actually put the cell phone down on the lectern as well. But don't hold it in your hands. It just looks, it just looks like you'd rather be doing something else. And think about it. Whenever anybody talks to you, even when they're being polite, going, listen, I'm very sorry. Uh, I just want to actually, I, I've got to answer this. You still kind of go into that standby mode. It's almost like built in after what technology has done to us today. Don't split the speeches. Keep them all running in succession. Now, this can change. If you are having a sit down dinner wedding and you've got confident speakers, this is a good idea to do. However, if your speakers are nervous, the last thing that you want to do is make the groom wait because I can guarantee you him or the best man, and I've seen this, I've watched guys at weddings pacing up and down. In fact, I've got some great photographs of that. And you see them sort of like down hidden in a little corner down at the bottom of the garden practicing their speeches and they are nervous as hell. So now the minute you start to split those speeches up, it just means that they're going to wait long to do their speeches. Another thing about splitting the speeches is that they tend to stretch out the evening because what happens is uh, very often people will say for example they'll have uh, the intro then they might have a speech then they'll have the starters then they might have one or two speeches then they might have the mains and then after that just before dessert or possibly first dance even they might have say for example the groom speech. This tends to stretch everything out. If you do decide to split the speeches then don't worry too much about people eating. People don't mind sitting down eating and watching a speech. I've seen this over the years. So if your speech wanted to start, let's say at 8.30, but everybody's still eating, start with a speech anyway, because there'll be clearing going on and people don't mind that. They don't mind eating a little bit, looking up a bit, eating a little bit. I have noticed this over the years, but if you are too polite and you wait for everybody to finish eating, that means it's just going to push your timeline out. So let's say you push your timeline out by 15 minutes on speech one. By the time you get to speech four, normally about four speeches, then you're going to have a groom who's about 45 minutes late to get to his speech which is fine if he's a confident speaker it also means the first dance is going to start later and it also means that the entire party is going to start later so all those formalities will keep on going if you want those formalities to be done quick and easy run the speeches one after the other golden advice one very important thing no politics at a speech nothing no politics whatsoever i've heard the father of a bride mention at least five times in his speech how hard it is to be married this while his daughter is sitting there not a good idea daddy it's a very very bad idea what you've got to do is keep any form of politics right out i've heard a maid of honor say you know, I didn't really like the groom when I met him, but he's all right now. Oh, thanks for that. The groom just sat there red faced. It was an extremely awkward moment. Something to watch out for is trying to be funny when you're not really funny. You get these people who try and copy, for example, I don't know, maybe they've seen Ryan Seacrest do something and then they try and do that. And one that almost always falls flat is when somebody goes, oh, but I digress. Let me be serious. They never get it right. They almost try, they sound fake when in fact they're just trying to 
to do their best. So just be yourself. That is really, really important. Take that speech, put it together, but never lose your own personality when you do that speech. Because remember, you're the person talking. Nobody else wants to see somebody else talking. And the chances of you being like somebody else, no matter how cool that person apparently appeared to be, will never work. Just be yourself. It is worth gold and everybody loves you for it. My next video is going to be a short one, but it is a tip worth gold. All you've got to do is, tomorrow I'll tell you.